What's up blockheads? Today we're going to be installing some new bars on the 2018 Honda Grom. Getting rid of the stock ones, throwing on some Pro Tapers. Alright, so this is a pretty common modification for a Honda Grom. Uh, people change out the bars all the time from stock because once you change out the bars, it gives the bike a totally different feel. Uh, so you can raise the bars, lower the bars. I kind of like the bars where they're at. I've gotten used to it. But if I could raise them up a little bit, I probably would. It'd be a little more comfortable. I ended up researching handlebars for a long while and ended up settling on the pro tapers because you know everybody does them and i started to look into why everybody does them and there's good reason because they have really great reviews basically what they make the bars out of are less uh, prone to bending and uh, especially with the brace in the middle i ended up going with the pro tapers everybody goes with the klx 110 i forget the model of the bend but they're really low right so i didn't want to go low i wanted them pretty much the same height as stock and you guys can see from the risers how much they come up so this is going to be about the same maybe a little maybe a little taller we'll do a comparison take the stock ones off and we'll compare the two side by side so these are the uh, pro taper se's which stands for seven eighths as you guys can see right there seven eighths which is the size of the measurement of the bar that goes on the ground they're the pro taper se's they're classified under the pit bikes so under the pit bike they have uh, two two style of bends which is basically the xr50 slash crf50 as you guys can see there and then they also have the uh, klx 110 slash drz something right so two two styles for pit bikes i will drop links to the bars here as well as the uh, throttle tube and the grips that i'm using everything will be down in the description below if you guys are interested in picking any of it up so basically i'm going to be walking you guys through how to change the bars on a honda grom nothing too difficult but in addition to changing out the bars like i said we're also changing out the throttle tube this is going to be a uh, quick action throttle tube so you don't have to pull as far as the stock one and then i am changing out the grips which i did show how to do in a previous video but i'm changing them out to these grips which don't have the little circle flanges on the ends like here so it's gonna be a totally new bar setup. The only thing I got left after that is some levers. So let's go ahead and uh, unpackage these ones. All right, so here they are unpackaged. Good looking bar. I really like the finish of them. So just to go over these with you real quick, a couple of the features, uh, basically you have a, uh, I think they call it like a shot peen finish here, which is kind of like almost like a wrinkle black, uh, not quite gloss. It's like that flat. The graphics, they they're not like stickers, so you can't peel them off. They're actually um, in like in the finish, which is cool. Honestly, like I'm not a huge fan of it, so I might cover them up, but we'll see. Looking over on this side, you have you have your measurements right there, so it's easier to uh, basically line it up and center everything up whenever you're installing the bars, and it tells you the degrees of measurement the degrees of, uh, of tilt, I would guess. You've got your um, middle pad, which is, you know, traditional pro taper. I'm gonna be changing that out. And then, so on your clutch side, the bar is knurled. So as you guys can see, knurled so that the clutch sticks on better. I'm just gonna be using some hairspray to stick it on, not grip glue or anything like that. And then it does have some markings on each side. So if you wanna trim the bars down, you can actually go ahead and trim them down. They've already got those measurements set up for you. No knurling on this side because uh, that's your throttle side and you're, you don't want your throttle tube getting hung up on there, right? Nothing under the bar pad. I don't even think you can take it off, can you? I know on some of them you can take it off and you can actually tighten the uh, cross brace, but not on these. Also, like I said, I went with a uh, different throttle tube. We did the Chimera or the Chimera, however you say it, quick action throttle tube. So you basically won't have to pull as far back to, uh, get as much throttle. And then the Biltwell grips, which I'm a fan of because they're nice and sticky. So we got our parts, good to go. So what we need to do is we need to remove the stock bars. What we're gonna do there, I have bar end mirrors, so I'm gonna remove the bar end mirrors first on each side. After that, I just need to remove the controls and the levers, right? Those bolts here. There might be a screw or something under here as well. I'm gonna walk you through that. And then after we've got all that stuff off, we're gonna take the bars out, right? Remove these little caps. Take those bolts out, remove those from the little risers, and then put the new ones on.
All right, so on the housings, each side you have screws on the back sides of here. Just Phillips screws, take those out. These are gonna open up like this, so like a little clamshell style design. And then on this side, you're going to have, it's basically gonna be retained right there. Some people, you can pull them off, but I'm gonna be changing the throttle tube anyway, so I'm actually gonna remove these, uh, these lines right here. I'm gonna clean that up, get that grease out of there. For the throttle, basically those two pieces thread into that part of the throttle tube. And then they they each fit inside of the little channels. That's cool that they uh, actually are connected because on a Harley, there's these little pieces and they can fall off. So everything in there is uh, retained. You can just kind of hang that downwards. And then the next part we're gonna be removing is this side and then I'm gonna remove the uh, the levers on each side. All right, so that clamp comes off, and that is the clutch side. All right, so now we're gonna take off this clamp, which is gonna be the brake and the brake reservoir. So when you're doing this, don't let the uh, reservoir tip upside down. You don't want any air going into your line. All right, so there we go. We have everything off the bars. And at this point, we are going to uh, undo the clamp basically where the bars are clamped onto the top of the triple tree. So you're gonna need to remove these covers and then there's going to be some hex key sockets under that. These little bowls are super useful. I'll provide a link to that in the description as well. All right, so these, these bolts here are really stuck in there. So what you don't wanna do is have the wrong size hex. So whenever we put it in there, wiggle it back and forth, Make sure it's not loose, make sure it's gripping because you don't want to like be turning it and then strip it because then it becomes a way more difficult job. So that seems to fit pretty well. Just to double check, I'm gonna check the SAE side. Yeah, so that doesn't fit as well. You wouldn't want to turn that one. You see how much more room it has wiggling? It fits, but there's not much wiggle. So it's a six millimeter hex. So obviously you want to get some leverage, make sure it's pushed down in there really good, seated, and then loosen it. another bowl. All right, so at this point, you're going to pull the top clamps up, just like that. Now there is knurling on the stock bars, so that's why they're sticking there without, uh, <laughs> without moving. Even though they're not clamped on, all you need to do, give them a pull, and boom. Stock bars are off. Basically ready to go ahead and throw the new ones on. But let's compare these first. These are the stock bars. And these are the Pro Taper XR50s. Very similar. I think these actually are, I think these are taller. Pretty sure. So that, oh yeah, hell yeah, that's awesome. So what a lot of people do is they'll order the Pro Taper KLR100s, and those are a shorter bar, right? And then what they'll do to get the height out of them that they want is they'll order risers. Well, risers, like a good set of risers is usually about anywhere between like 60 and $100. So instead of ordering risers, just order the bars with the right height, right? Now these aren't as popular, there's not as many pictures of them up, but I checked out the measurements, did a lot of studying, and uh, these look like the right bars. So, in terms of height, yeah, look at that. Oh, that's awesome. They are a little wider. I'll have to see if, I, uh, if I'm cool with that or not. I might trim them down a little bit. All right, so while I was doing research, I always wanted to see how they compared to the stock bars, so I'm showing you guys that in comparison to the stock bars. So these are the Pro Tapers. Those are stock. That's how they compare. Pro Taper XR50s are a little bit taller by about, let's say by, probably about an inch. And if you line them up, center them up here, they, they're a little bit longer or a little bit wider, but that's pretty awesome. I'm thinking I'm gonna be happy with those. What we need to do at this point, I'm gonna take the Pro Tapers, 
and put them in here and then right off into the sunset. <laughs> so at this point, we're going to uh, put the clamps back on. I'm not seeing any Loctite or anything. And since these bikes don't shake too much, I'm assuming it's probably gonna be okay. So I'm gonna look up a torque spec real quick, but uh, we're gonna go ahead and get everything back on with the new bars and just install everything loosely. Since I am doing bar ends, I'm going to need to remove these little end caps, but that's uh, actually pretty easy. Yeah, they're just these little plug pieces, so those pop right out. Like that for now. I mean, they're barely, I mean, not even tightened. They're just snugging them down. Basically snugged them down until I felt like a little tiny bit of resistance just so they don't move while I'm mounting everything back up. All right, so I have heard of this. Like I said, I did my research about possibly needing some extra length from the line. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna remove this front headlight piece, four bolts, so two on each side. And then I'm gonna see if I can get some slack in the lines, pull some line out. So that's how you remove that, just uh, four bolts, and then connector there, connector there, easy stuff. That's gonna give us a little more room to work with to uh, try and pull some lines out of here. All right, so a couple of important parts right now just to address it before I get too far ahead. I am trying to get some more length out of the brake line. Uh, there is this bracket piece right here that attaches to the lower triple tree. Uh, the brake line is rubber on the outside, and then there's this piece that attaches to that which it looks like they've just glued i'm not sure if you guys can see that or not but yeah it's totally just glued so if you work at it you can actually separate that glue from the brake line and adjust that so i'm working on that in addition i am going to need some more length out of the clutch cable so what i'm going to do there is instead of having the clutch cable routed through back there i'm going to try to i'm going to try to bring it up a little bit and route it through up here instead of going forward in front of that plate just so i mean you can see where it's moving there. So in order to do that, I'm gonna have to pull the uh, cable out of the lever. So what you need to do is loosen it up right here. You're gonna pull back this boot. You're gonna loosen right here and you need to line up the, the locking piece right here and that, and then you're going to pull out on the cable this way while holding the lever. So I'll do that real quick just to show you guys. Then I'm gonna push the cable back through and route it up through here. Just be sure not to lose the little sleeve piece that's on there. All right, there we go. So you guys see how much more length that gave me? Quite a bit. All right, so I've been messing with the wiring and all that for a little bit. Basically, while I uh, get stuff on the bars, I kind of turn it, make sure that it's gonna have enough clearance. One thing I am noticing is the distance from the controls where they're mounted to the end of the bars. So I'm sitting here thinking, I'm like, okay, well, these bars are wider, right? So they should have enough area here to mount. And then I look at those bars. So these have a different bend to them. They start to bend sooner out towards the end of the grip. This is what I mean. You see the bend on here? If we were to flip it over, all right, line those up there. You see where the bar, it has it has more horizontal distance on the stock bar versus the horizontal distance on here. It starts to bend a lot sooner right there versus the stock bar. So you have about an inch or so extra on the stock bar. So if you see where the controls mounted on the stock bar, basically the controls are gonna start to mount right at the bend of the pro tapers so i'm gonna go ahead and uh see if we can uh, make it work also a quick note took the bike off the stand sat on it adjusted the bars to my liking to where i felt that they were outright enough and i didn't tighten them down all the way but i did tighten them so that uh, i could go ahead and figure out how much slack i needed in the lines to mount all the controls and everything so if you guys want to do that feel free all right so quick update here 
Got this pretty much set up on here. I took it off the stand, did full tilt left, and then tried to rock it while it was in first gear, and it won't rock, and then I pull in clutch, and it moves. Whenever you do full tilt right, clutch cable tightens up quite a bit, which was worrying me, but whenever I rocked it like this, it wasn't pulling the clutch cable either, so then whenever I pulled uh, the clutch lever in, it engaged the clutch, so we are good for the clutch, full tilt, left and right. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, tighten this stuff all down. I'm gonna have to cut the ends off of these anyways, so we do have a little extra, but I'm gonna be cutting the ends off to uh, fit the bar and mirrors on. So a lot of places use grip glue. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna use hairspray. It's what I've used on grips previously. And it uh, acts as a lubricant while you're putting it on. And then it also, uh, after it dries, you know, sets, and it's removable if you need to take them off. Cool. So that's that. Aussie Mega Hairspray. Thanks, Australia. And now we're gonna work on the throttle side. Got the brake reservoir back on there and the brake lever as well. And uh, we are all good there. Reconnected the clamp, checked distance. Now the brake line just doesn't obviously change too much distance wise. We just needed a little more length. What we do have to worry about whenever turning is the throttle cables. So what I'm gonna do now is uh, hook up the new throttle tube to the throttle cables and then get everything back on and then I'm gonna install the grip. So you wanna get these little pieces into fittings in there and then run the wiring in the channels. All right, finally got him back in. So now, I'm gonna go ahead and snug that up and put this clamp back on. So one thing I did forget to mention, you guys notice on the inside of these, there's these two little pieces of metal and they have like a metal barb sticking out of the bottom of the housing. So what that metal barb does in the stock bars, you notice there's a little hole, right? So that little metal barb sticks into that hole and it keeps the controls from basically being able to move back and forth like this. So rather than drill into the bars though, what I'm gonna do is right along this edge, I'm gonna go around it once with some electric tape so that it fills in that gap and this basically will bite into the electric tape. There you go, no movement. I mean, if you twist it hard enough, It'll move, but not as much as there was. Yeah, that's that's plenty good. All right, same on the other side. Got this side all on, tightened down. I'm gonna go ahead and do the hairspray method. Get the grip on there, let it set. Then I'm gonna cut the end off of that one, put the bar end mirror on, and then this one as well. All right, cool. Go ahead and let that side set. I'm gonna go ahead and throw the bar and mirrors on there, but there is a video for that already. I'm not gonna film that part. If you guys are interested in installing some bar and mirrors, go check out that video. I'll drop the link in the description below. What I'm gonna do now is tighten everything up, tighten the throttle cable back down. I got the controls tightened, but I'm gonna tighten these up and then I'm gonna tighten top clamps as well. And then after that, I'm gonna take it for a test spin, make sure that it uh, functions properly full tilt left and right, and uh, I'll be right back. All right, just went for a quick run. Everything works great. The throttle feels so much better with that uh, Chimera or Chimera, however you say it, uh, quick action throttle tube. You have to turn it a lot less in order for the throttle to be uh, more responsive. So that's really awesome. Anyways, that's how uh, that's how you install new bars on a Honda Grom. Pretty sure it's gonna be the same for Gen 1 and Gen 2. The bike I'm working on here is a 2018, so it's a Gen 2. With the bars, you do have to, like I said, get some slack out of the, out of the cables. Basically, uh, the slack that they have, you gotta like find it and lengthen them just a little bit, but uh, overall, it works and it uh, feels really nice. So I will probably adjust the angle of them a little bit 
over the next day or two. I am gonna go ahead and install the bar and mirrors here in just a little bit, but like I said, there's another video for that if you guys wanna go do that. If you guys are interested in any of the products, you can find them in the description down below. I will link everything for you. If you'll have any questions, feel free to post up. Just a heads up, I'm not a licensed mechanic. I just like working on bikes. Got a couple of them that I work on. Yeah, see the disclaimer below. Do this stuff at your own risk. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you did enjoy it, be sure to hit the like button. If you guys aren't subscribed already, be sure to hit the subscribe button as well. Hit that bell icon so it sends you notifications of future uploads and all that. Until next time, you guys ride safe out there. Stay vigilant and I'll catch y'all later. Deuces.